Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levin. And now to visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve, who's alternately looking at his watch, which says 315, and at a large, mysterious package, which says, Deliver to Leroy Forrester, Esquire. <laughs> Uh, isn't Leroy ever going to get home from school, my dear? Now, Uncle Mort, you've been fussing over that package ever since it came. You shouldn't be so curious. I'm not in the least bit curious. I was just wondering what was inside. I think it contains magazines that says Leroy Forster, Esquire. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, Bertie. Uh, by the way, where's it from? Some place called Fragile. Yeah, for... <laughs> no, no, the name on the other side. Oh, you mean... Oh, use no hooks. <laughs> use no hooks, Colorado, yeah. The name of the firm, Bertie. Turn it over. Oh, yeah, it's the Metropolis Merchandise Company. Well, this has me worried. Now, let me look at it once more, Bertie. Here it is, Mr. Gilsey. Uh, thank you. Oh, darn it, it almost flew open. <laughs> but not quite. Well, don't lift it by the string, Uncle. It'll break. Oh, yes, so it will. I mean, I'll try to be more careful, my dear. Uh, now, let me examine it. If you examine that box any more strenuously, it's going to fall apart. Yes, I hope you... I mean, I suppose you're right, Bertie. Well, this has gone on long enough. Bring me the scissors, please, Bertie. The scissors? Uncle, I don't think you should open Leroy's mail. Who's opening Leroy's mail? I just decided to cut the cuffs off my trousers and bring this suit back in style. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like Leroy now. It can't be. He shut the door after himself. Oh, Bertie, I'm hungry. That's Leroy, all right. Was there any mail for me? Yeah, here it is. Gee, I can hardly wait. Good afternoon, Uncle Mort. Where is it? Hi, Marge. Oh, boy, what a big package. Yes. Hello, buddy. Anybody got a pair of scissors? Hi, son. Yes. Oh, gee, at last. Why, it's garden seeds. Yeah, 300 packages of them. That's a good deal, Leroy. Sure, all I have to do is sell them at 10 cents a package and send back the $30. That's not such a good deal after all. <laughs> what do you get out of it, young man? Well, I'm not going to tell you now. I'm going to wait till I finish selling the whole slew and surprise you. Well, if you sell that many seeds, it's so going to surprise me. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've got three surefire customers to begin with. Is that so? Who are they, my boy? You, Marge and Bertie. Yes, uh, oh. <laughs> All right, step right up, folks. Get your nice fresh seeds. Which kind do you want, Bertie? Well, let me see. Oh, you got flower seeds, too? Sure thing. Petunias, hollyhocks, cucumbers, onions? Yes. Yeah, and sweet William. Oh, that's what I'll have. There's a boy in the army named William. I sweet on. <laughs> okay, that'll be a dime, Bertie. How about you, Marge? You want to take something to remind you of that ensign in the Navy? You want any beans? <laughs> <laughs> No, Leroy. I'll remember him without beans. I'll take those forget me now. Uh, here's my dime, Leroy. I've taken some kohlrabi seeds. Kohlrabi? What's that? Uh, kohlrabi, Leroy, is cabbage trying to be cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, don't you think 300 packages are too many for you to try to sell? Oh, no, sis. I am going to cover every backyard in town. And look how well I've done so far. In the first five minutes, I've already three down and only 297 yards to go. <laughs> Look, Piggy, why don't you buy your mother a package of flower seeds for Mother's Day? Yeah, but a package of seeds is a lot cheaper than a bouquet. No, I'm sorry, I can't trust you. Now, in the instructions, the company says they trust me, but I'm not supposed to trust anybody else. Well, at least think it over, will you? Okay, goodbye. Uh, by the way, Leroy, it's just a week since those seeds arrived. How many have you got left? 263. If, no, Leroy, I don't mean the number of seeds. I mean the number of packages. That's what I mean, too, Unc. Yes. Business would have been a lot better. Only half the kids in town are selling seeds. Oh, well, it's the best salesman who win out. 
Gee, Unc, you used to be a super salesman, didn't you? Well, yes. And I started selling the Gildersleeve girdle. I... I developed some pretty snappy tricks, my boy. But the principal thing to remember is politeness. Bear in mind that a polite approach will always get a polite response. Yeah, now, who's at that door? How do you do, sir? I hope I'm not intruding. You are. What do you want? Well, uh, I represent the Big Gem Encyclopedia Corporation of East St. Louis, Illinois. No, scram. But you haven't... Beat it. But you haven't even heard what I have to say. I don't want any. Goodbye. Remember, Leroy, a polite approach will always get a polite response. <laughs> Always remember that. I'll bet a quarter that when you went out after a prospect, you brought him back on a dotted line, like Frank Burke. A buck. Okay, a buck, then. It, let's not bet. <laughs> However, I wager I could do such a good job selling your vegetable seeds that you could come along ten minutes later and sell the same people corned beef to go with the cabbages they'd expect to raise. Yeah, it's too bad you still can't do it, Uncle Mort. Yeah, who says I can't? Could you? Why, of course. Oh, gee, that's swell. Oh, Mort, Uncle Mort is going to show me how to sell the rest of my seeds. Now, hold on a minute. I didn't say I'll that... go to my room and get my stock, Uncle. Huh? Oh, great jumping jeeps. I've been taken in again. <laughs> Remember, Leroy, the important thing is to start talking first and don't stop till your customer says yes. Understand? Yes. All right. Now watch me. Oh, Mrs. Dobson. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Leroy. Is there anything I can do for you? Because Mom isn't home right now. She's downtown getting some burned out electric bulbs in case you have another blackout. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, sir. Excuse me for cutting in, Dottie, but I'm helping Leroy sell these wonderful garden seeds, and I thought maybe you folks would like to buy some. Oh, garden seeds? Well, I don't know whether we're going to plant a garden or not this year on a kind of I tried one in 1941, but he didn't have a bit of luck. You didn't? What'd you plant? Peanuts. I planted a whole bag of them, but nothing came up. <laughs> well, do you think the salt kept them from growing, Mr. Gildersleeve? You... Well, maybe I should try something else this year. Have you got any popcorn? I'm crazy about popcorn. If you have any, I'll take ten cents worth of it's hot. You know... Dottie, I'm sorry. However, we have lettuce and spinach and eggplant and oyster plant. Oyster plant and eggplant? Oh, you can't fool me. Eggs come from nests and oysters don't grow on plants either. You catch them with a harpoon. You harpoon. <laughs> well, I think I'll just plant bird seed this year on account of the birds always get it anyhow. Well, goodbye now. <laughs> Dark, Uncle Mort. Don't you think we'd better go home while we're just hungry and before we start starving? No, Leroy. I'd still like to show you how to make a sale. Now, I have a feeling that things are going to be different at this house. Okay, I'll ring the bell. Yes. Yeah. Now, observe the way I give them the uh, politeness approach. Yes, what is it? Oh, how do you do, sir? I'd like to sell you some wonderful garden seeds. They grow so quickly that all you have to do is stick them in the ground and jump back fast. <laughs> Say, uh... Don't you live over on Parkside Avenue? Why, yes. How did you know? Don't you remember me? No, I can't say that I do. Well, I came to your door this afternoon selling encyclopedias. You did? Yes, I did. And do you remember what you did? No, what? This! <laughs> yes, now I remember. <laughs> Can't we continue the salesmanship lesson tomorrow? No. After we sell some seeds to Mrs. Twitchell Leroy, I'm sure she's going to buy some anyway. Why not? She's been a pioneer in everything else. Uh, uh, what's keeping her? You'd think the old squaw would answer her door, but she's probably too la di da, <laughs> Mrs. Twitchell. Oh, hello, Leroy. How do, Mr. Gildersleeve? What brings you here? It's these seeds of Leroy's. He had quite a lot of them, and I suggested to him that you might want some. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. I could plant some in my garden. You see, Leroy, your Uncle Mort knows. How about three or four packages of corn, Mrs. Twitchell? Mm, are you sure you can spare it? <laughs> oh, sure. We got nine packages. Uh, would you like all nine of them? Uh, yes, I would. Oh, splendid. Now, how about some turnips and parsnips? Oh, do you think they'd be useful? Oh, surely. They're good for... Uh, what are they good for? Oh, yes, they make better mashed potatoes than lima beans do. <laughs> Here you are, six packages. Oh, uh, I would also like some beet seeds. Uh, how do they come? Beets? A to the bar. 
Yeah. Kind of silly, isn't it? <laughs> we don't. We struck a gold mine. Yeah, you said it. Uh, now, Mr. Twitchell, would you like some Brussels sprouts or okra or lettuce? Oh, no, no, no more, Mr. Whitney. I already have more than I should have taken, and really, it was most generous of you to come over with such lovely little gifts. Yes, gifts? Uh, thank you, and good night. Good night. <laughs> Now, Judge Hooker, the first thing we want understood is that we're selling these seeds, not giving them away. I understand, Gildersleeve. You're no congressman. Yeah. <laughs> the reason you should buy these seeds is to start a victory garden, Judge. Yeah, everyone should have a victory garden. Right. Food will help win the war. Food is as important as ammunition. Yeah, and all the money we save raising our own food, we can put into war-saving stamps and bonds. Say, hey, that's a very good point, young man. Hey, yeah, and look at the exercise it'll give us. Sure, and that way you can get rid of that spare tire, Gildy. Well, I wasn't aware that I had any spare tire. Just look in any mirror, Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, yes, the judge made a joke, Leroy. Let's laugh. <laughs> I'm glad you agree with us, though, Judge. How many packages of seeds do you want? None. If none, why not? Well, I planted in my garden a week ago. Gee, too late. You mean that pint-sized plot in your backyard? Well, you can't raise enough stuff there to feed your next-door neighbor's bantam chicken. Well, I haven't any more room here. If I had a place out in the country, I could sure go to town. Oh, out in the country. Oh, say, there's an acre that belongs to Marjorie and Leroy's estate right outside the city limits. There is? Well, uh, we'd let you plant a big garden out there if you bought your seeds from the right party. Uh, oh, an acre's too much for me to handle by myself. But I take half if you plant the other half, Gildy. That's an idea, Uncle Mort. Between the two of you, you'd use up all the seeds we haven't sold. Yes, well, I don't know. Remember, I... Gildersleeve, food is ammunition. Yes. Especially the food you'd grow. <laughs> We can use it to throw at the enemy. Yeah, well, that's all. Well, I'll show you. At Leroy, how many packages of seeds have you got left? Twenty-three dollars worth. All right. That'll be eleven and a half from you, Judge, and the same amount from me. Now, how about making it a sporting proposition? I'll toss you to see who pays for the whole thing. Okay, he's going to toss me. <laughs> you call it, Hooker. Hey, ready? Head. It's a head, all right. Head, huh? I should have mine examined. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. But first, here's an interesting question a friend asked me, a question that certainly proves American housewives are nutrition conscious these days. It was about parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread made by Kraft. This housewife said, I serve my family parquet margarine and they all like it, but does parquet provide them with the kind of nourishment I should expect from a spread for bread? Well, that's easy to answer. The answer is yes. Parquet margarine provides economically the important food elements that nutritional experts generally require of a spread for bread. Here they are. First, parquet margarine provides energy. In fact, it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. Second, parquet is nourishing because the wholesome American vegetable oils and farm products that go into parquet are nourishing in themselves. Third, parquet margarine is a reliable food source of vitamin A. Yes, summer and winter, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. So, you see, thrifty parquet margarine provides the things a spread for bread should provide. And it tastes so deliciously good, your family is sure to like it. So why not try some tomorrow? Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Have you ever tried to locate a piece of property from the legal description on the deed? Well, that's what the great Gildersleeve and his nephew Leroy are attempting to do this morning before starting out to plant that victory garden. The uh, 200 northerly feet of the westerly half of Section 5 East, <laughs> sometimes known as the old Flugelhammer property. In track 207 and a half of the 1904 survey, as provided for in paragraph O, of the treaty made by President Chester A. Arthur with the Kitsiku Indians. I still don't know where it is. Yes, neither do I. Too bad I never went out and looked at that property. Yeah, it might turn out to be in a swamp or under a lake. Well, in that case, we could raise ducks. Or rice. Or ducks and rice. <laughs> Imagine raising ducks already stuffed with wild rice. 
Before you start selling any duck dinners, Unc, yes. don't you think we'd better go downtown and ask the county recorder where this property is located? That's a mighty good idea, my boy. Then we can go directly out there. Okay, start the car. Yeah, not so fast. What about our lunch? Oh, Bertie. I got the whole pack, Mr. Gillsleeve. Here he is. I picked some new kind of sandwiches I hope you like. Oh, what are they, Bertie? I call them Bertie Burgers. Yes, Bertie Burgers. They consist of half a cold chicken between two slices of baked ham. Oh, boy. Come on, let's, let's hurry out there so we can dig in. To the sandwiches, I mean. Yeah. You're going to do a lot of other digging, young man, before we come to the Bertie Burgers. Are all the garden tools in the rear compartment, Leroy? Sure thing. Start her up, Bunk. It seems to me we've forgotten something. Uh, tools, lunch, old clothes. I guess we've got everything. Well, thank you, Bertie. Welcome. Now, take it easy the first day, and don't try to chew more than you can bite on. Yeah, okay, Bertie. Have a good time while we're away. <laughs> yeah? You sure showed a funniest-looking farm that I've ever seen. <laughs> well, so long, folks. Yeah, so long. Did you hear that, Leroy? Bertie says we're two of the funniest-looking farmers he ever uh, uh, seen. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, Bertie just reminded me what I'd forgotten to take. All that seed. <laughs> this is certainly out in the country, all right, isn't it, my boy? I bet the Saturday evening post doesn't get out here till Saturday. <laughs> ever happened to have property this far from town? Well, it was taken in on a bad debt that we were taken in on. Well, according to the directions, it runs 200 feet north from this marker. But which way is north? It's north? Let me see. If we had an oak tree, we could tell. If it had moss on it, it moss grows on the north side. It, nor is it the south side. Well, it's one of the two, anyway. Well, how about asking that man over there? That man? Where? Over there with the mule. Oh, I thought that was a pair of mules. <laughs> Hey, you over there. It's which way is north? What did you say? If I said which way is north. Huh? If which way is north. Don't know. I just work here. <laughs> I could have gotten a more intelligent answer out of the other mule. Well, maybe we can figure it out by ourselves, Uncle. Huh? The sun should be in the east, shouldn't it? Yes, unless it's afternoon already. Well, then, if you face east, your left hand is toward the north, isn't it? Why, yes, you're a bright boy scout, Leroy. Now, all we have to do is measure off 200 feet towards our left. Uh-oh, we forgot to bring a yardstick. Yeah, one thing after another. And yeah, maybe that fellow over there has a yardstick. If, hey, you! If, have you got a yardstick? What did you say? I said if you got a yardstick. Got a yardstick. Don't know. I just worked here. <laughs> Never mind, Leroy. I'll just step off the two hundred yards. That's well. How long a step do you take, Uncle? Huh? A step? Well, let's see. Somewhere between. Uh, oh, I forget. Or did I ever know? <laughs> you better skip the stepping, Leroy. Have you got any other suggestions? Yeah. Too bad Birdie isn't here. She wears a size twelve shoe. We can use it for a one foot ruler. <laughs> How tall are you, Unc? Uh, tall? I'm five feet ten. Why? Gee, if you were only six feet tall, you could lay down and be two yardsticks. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea, Leroy. I know what we'll do. Hey, bring that rake handle out of the back of the car, will you please? This one? Yes, yes. Now, I'll lay down here like this. Now, you mark the spot in the dust where my feet end. Okay, but what... You'll soon see, my boy. And I'll mark the top of my... where my head hits the ground there. Splendid. Yes. Now add two inches. Add two inches? Get away, Walkie. I still don't get it. Just measure the distance from my head to my toes on that rake handle. Then add the two inches, and you'll have six feet. You Oh! Get off my uncle Now beat it. Get that cow away from here, Leroy. Get out of my bed. Oh! Just quit swinging that tail in my eyes, madam. She's gone, never once. Oh, thank goodness she's gone. It help me up, Leroy. My goodness. What does that farmer mean, letting a dangerous cow run around loose? If, hey, you! What did you say? Why did you leave that cow loose? Uh, what's that? If, what do you mean, leaving that cow run around stepping on people? Who's what? 
fool! Why is that cow allowed to run wild? Don't know. She just works here. <laughs> Uncle Mort. That's fine, Judge Hooker. This is our last row. Yeah, it's a mighty hard row to hoe, too. Oh, don't beat so much, you old muttonhead. Doesn't this take you back to the days when you were a kid on the farm, Judge? It would, Gildy, except for one thing. Uh, what's that? I was never on the farm when I was a kid. Oh, I'll bet you never were a kid, either. You must have been born middle-aged. Was it fun on the farm, Monk? I'll say. I used to go around barefooted. Oh, it was nice to bury my little pink toes in the cool, fresh air. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind doing that right now. That won't make you a kid again, Gildersleeve. Well, maybe not, but these shoes are awfully tight anyway. If no one minds, I'm going to take them off. <coughs> yes, there's nothing like getting back to the soil, is there? Uh, certainly feels nice to scrunch the dirt between your toes, doesn't it? It does? Yeah. Come on, Judgy. You might as well be comfortable. <laughs> I believe I will try it. Uh, How about you, Leroy? Oh, thanks. I've outgrown that sort of thing long ago. <laughs> well, I got my shoes off, Gildy. <laughs> Feels mighty good. Yeah, it'd feel even better if you took your socks off, too. <laughs> Huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's wrong with you? I'm standing on a pussy willow. <laughs> <laughs> If you gentlemen farmers had stopped planting your feet and finished planting the rest of these seeds, we'd be all through. Yes, you're right, Leroy. Come on, Judge. Quit clowning around and help Leroy and me. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, here's some seeds. Uh, you put two of these in each hole, and Judge Hooker, you cover them with dirt. Oh, that's easy enough. Hey, you've got two different kinds of seeds in this bag, Leroy. Which do you want us to plant? One of each. That's unusual. What's the idea? Oh, it's an experiment I'm making. I'm mixing corn and lima bean seeds together to see if we can get a sucker tash plant. Yes, <laughs> well, if this works, we can try planting a blue plate special. <laughs> hey, come on, Judge. I'll drop them in and you cover them up. Surely. Huh? Now, let's do it with teamwork and rhythm. Rhythm. Yeah, we'll count. One, two, three, four. Oh. On one and two, you drop in the seeds. And on three and four, I'll rake okay. over the dirt. Yeah. Okay? Why not? Anything your little mind can think of, Judge. <laughs> yeah. Let's begin. One and two. Three, four. If one, if two. Three, four. If one, if two. Three, four. If corn, a bean. Rake, rake. If corn, a bean. Rake. Oh, <laughs> Quit raking my big toe, you clumsy little bastard. <laughs> oh, I never came anywhere near your big toe, you big ninny. Is that right? Well, look. Is that your big toe? <laughs> Why, I thought it was a lima bean. <laughs> Judge Hooker, lima beans don't twitch. Hey, uh, I finished the rest of this row by myself. You two can put your shoes on now and we can go home. Oh, at last. Hey, Judge, what'd you do with my shoes and stockings? I didn't do anything. Where are mine? Uh, that's kind of peculiar, isn't it? Uh, Leroy. Yes, Uncle Morris? Did you pick up our shoes and stockings? No, I didn't touch them. But how could they possibly disappear right off a bare field with no one else around? I don't know. We can't pitter-patter home in our bare feet like this. Hey, hey, I just figured out what happened. Huh? Come on, Uncle Mort. Come on, Judge. Let's get busy with our rakes and hose again. You planted your shoes and socks. <laughs> oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. Mr. Gillsleeve, how soon you expect to start hops in the truck on your truck farm? Well, any day now, Bertie. Ever since the last rain, everything is coming along swimmingly. Yeah, I tried some of the radishes yesterday, and they're coming up fine. Now, Marjorie, you should come out someday and look our garden over. It's a vision of vitamins. Well, I'll ride out with you the next time you go. How are you getting along with Judge Hooker? Oh, all right, except for that dirty trick he pulled on us yesterday. What was that? Well, he was raking his half of the garden when he suddenly found out he'd lost his diamond ring. Yeah, and he offered a dollar reward to the one who found it. Yeah, well, Leroy and I scratched through his whole patch. When we finished, he discovered that he hadn't worn the ring that day. It was all a scheme to get us to rake his rutabagas for him. Uncle Morton was so mad, he hit the judge over the head with a scarecrow. 
Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Uncle. Yeah, I know it, my dear. I'm sorry I did it, too. Now we got to get a new scarecrow. <laughs> when are you going out there again, Uncle Mark? Well, uh, not till next week. Ain't you afraid the gophers will go for the plants? Uh, or the weeds spring up and choke them? But no, Bertie. I cleared the garden of all the weeds yesterday. Yeah, only some of the weeds turned out to be young carrots. Oh, that was too bad. Did you pull out many of them? Well, I must have ripped up 12 or 14 rows before I discovered what they were. <laughs> However, I had a lucky break, my dear. You did? Yes. I did all my pulling out on Judge Hooker's half. One more row and I would have starved on our own carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort, I've been amazed at what you've done with this bit of land. You really and truly have a green thumb. Yes, it matches the rest of his complexion. <laughs> now, I'll see here, Judge Hooker. You get over on your own side with your pumpkins and cabbages. That way you won't look so conspicuous. Uncle oh. oh, Mort, the judge was only having a little fun. Huh? He didn't mean it. Well, look now, but there's that man again. Yeah. Oh, Mort. Oh, you mean the hired hand from the farm next door. Yeah. Why did he lean over the fence and grin and laugh all the time? He's been doing that ever since we started this garden. He used to make us angry at first. Doesn't he give any explanation? Well, if you ask what it's all about, he just says... Don't oh, know. I, I just work here. here. Yeah. Oh, I bet I could find out. Let me try, huh? That's not a bad idea, Marjorie. Go ahead. Let's just go over to I'd like to know what this is all about. Come on, then. Only let me do all the talking. Come on along, Uncle Moore. At first, I thought he was amused at our efforts to be farmers. We've had such marvelous results, and he still gives us a horse laugh. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, lady. Nice garden my uncle and my brother and Judge Hooker fixed up, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with the garden, is there? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> What's the big joke, huh? <laughs> oh, come on, tell me. It's the land. The garden is yours. <laughs> What's wrong with that land? Nothing. Only it ain't yours. You, what? <laughs> what do you mean it isn't ours? The first day you come out here, you started measuring south from the stake and stayed in the horse. <laughs> what? Does that mean that we put in all that work for nothing and the crop isn't ours? Oh, I had a feeling I was wrong, Judge. When did you get that feeling, Gildersleeve? Yes, this morning. A fine time. Yeah, so I went downtown and I found out that a Mr. Compton owned this property. Yeah, yeah. That's the man I work for. Oh, no, you don't. Not anymore. I bought this property this morning, and you work for me now. By George, you don't either. You're fired. The great Gilder Slave will be with us again in a few minutes. Meantime, I imagine you mothers and housewives are pretty busy these days, so I'm sure you're interested in ways of streamlining the preparing of meals and getting results that are mighty appetizing, too. Now, if you're used to running to the refrigerator for a dab of this for a shortening, a dab of that for pan frying, and something else for a spread for bread, here's a time-saving hint. Use parquet margarine for all these purposes. Yes, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. You see, the delicate appetizing flavor that makes parquet margarine... Such a delicious spread for bread makes it a favorite for cooking, too. Yes, parquet margarine is a real flavor shortening that makes all baked foods taste better. It's a swell seasoning for hot vegetables. Parquet margarine makes pan-fried foods tastier, too. And it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. So in one convenient package, you have a grand-tasting product for all these uses. And remember this, no matter how you use it, parquet margarine is a nourishing, wholesome energy food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. So tomorrow, sure, try economical parquet margarine. Remember, it's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. (laughs) 